You're listening to Weekends with Simon Marnie on 702 ABC Sydney. Don Norris from realsurf.com, from noodlies.com. It is, of course, on February the 4th, I think, the 3rd, the start of the Chinese New Year and the Vietnamese New Year. And whilst this year we actually have two animals for the new year. To explain more, we're joined by the wonderful Tang Nyo, the Asian food expert and collator of noodlies.com. You started your celebrations last night in Belmore Park. Absolutely, Simon, and and congratulations on the the beep as well. I couldn't believe that you actually got people to beep while they're on the bridge. I know I'll probably get in trouble for the noise complaints now, but <laughs> that's good. But last night was fantastic. Last night, I guess um, City of Sydney was first off the block in terms of celebrating Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year, as they call it. Um, and um, it was um, it was fantastic. They had you know the usual line dancing. But they, they brought it over, actually, acts from China, from Hubei province. There was a, um, on the stage, at one stage, a particularly haunting um, singing. There's a guy there who sung, like, just, it was just fantastic. It was really high pitch. Um, it was, it was uh, fantastic because it, it brought something new and different that you don't expect, because you expect, of course, line dancing. Um, and then, of course, there's martial arts. Um, and I reckon there were being about, oh, 10,000 around in Belmore Park last night. And if you think that's a lot, then you take into account, as you so aptly put on the on your website, it's not just the CBD. There's Burwood, Ride, Hurstville, Cogra, Rockdale, more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's actually, I counted there's at least 12 different um, places, festivals that you can celebrate in Sydney alone. You know, it covers north, the CBD, south, inner, southwest and west. And that's the most that we've ever had. And I think um, this year more people will have something to do with Lunar New Year than ever. And you mentioned Lunar New Year there because just as we we call it Chinese New Year, for example, Vietnamese New Year kicks in at this time as well, but with a different animal. Yes, um, we, um, because I'm Vietnamese, but um, we all celebrate the same calendar because uh, it's about the, um, the lunar calendar, and that's why the dates change each year. Um, but we, on, in terms of the zodiac, the animal that represents the year, um, they're usually the same, but yeah. this year is actually quite different. It's the, if you go into the Sydney CBD, it's the year of the rabbit because that's all the signage that you see. But for Vietnamese, it's the year of the cat. So um, you can imagine in um, council areas where there's a big population of Chinese and Vietnamese, they're, they're all a bit confused at the moment. And in fact, I live in Cabramatta and the Fairfield Council here has to have a picture of a cat and a rabbit. So that's, <laughs> they can make sure they cover everybody. So why do we have the different animals? Do we know? Uh, well, there's, there's a, a lot of stories, but one um, explanation is that one way to say rabbit in Chinese sounds a little like Mao or Mel, and that sounds like a uh, cat in Vietnamese. So they think it might have been a mistranslation you know, through the years, and it's it sort of it's stuck ever since. Look, there's, uh, there's all the very obvious traditions and foods around uh, the Lunar New Year, but then there's many little traditions that happen within the home. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's, um, one thing to note is whatever you do on the first day of the year, Simon, it's going to happen to you repeatedly over the rest of the year. So, no fighting with family, uh, no debts. And in fact, if anyone's chasing up uh, debts from um, someone from an Asian culture, now's the time to do it because everyone wants to pay off all their debts before the new year. Ah. Uh, no cleaning or, or no doing of anything that you don't want um, done for the rest of the year. Wow, so that's all on day one. Now, which is, because the festivities go over a couple of weeks, which is the day? Well, that, this is a good thing with being a Sydney cider. I mean, last night was um, Chinese New Year in um, the Sydney CBD, but that festival goes for two and a half weeks. But today, today alone, there's three different festivals that you can actually go to. Um, Hurstville um, have their street festival on Forest Road, um, Cabramatta in Freedom Plaza, and you've been there, Simon, um, for um, today and tomorrow. Wow. And Bankstown as well. Uh, so that's just today. And then next week, um, the Vietnamese have their big festival in Fairfield um, Showground. And I really encourage everyone to go to the Vietnamese Fairfield one. Showground goes off. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's right. 
it's no longer the races. It's a, it's a Vietnamese cultural festival. So which day is the Fairfield one? Um, it, it goes for three days, actually. It starts on Friday night, the 4th, and it ends on Sunday, the 6th. Oh, you got to go there. That is the best one. <laughs> There's about 80,000 people who go over that entire um, period. But what I like about it is you get more food, like Vietnamese food, than you would get any, at any other festival like, because the Vietnamese love their food. And, of course, a lot of people um, have had Chinese food. They experience it with Chinese food. But here you can get a lot of really very, very good Vietnamese food. And it's like the street food. Tung, I could talk for ages about this, but Craig Foster's waiting to look, talk about the soccer. Uh, noodles.com for all the list of the activities as they happen. And we'll get you into talk blogging very shortly. But thanks for joining us on Happy weekends. Year. Happy Year of the Cat. <laughs>